Today, I want to talk about whether AMC is about to squeeze. I want to go through a newly discovered regulation SHO ruling that explains the January 2021 GameStop run-up and how AMC may be on track for the exact same thing. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Frank tweeted saying NYSE regulation SHO list. Day 35 for AMC was on Friday, but what does that all mean? And he said, usually I don't get hyped about these SEC rulings that should go in our favor, but tend to go in favor of the hedge funds, because we've seen way too many times that these rules are not enforced. But he said this time though, it feels different, because this is the exact thing that caused the GameStop run up back in January of 2021. GameStop ran not just with 35 days of FTDs or on a T plus 35 settlement basis, but after spending 35 consecutive days on the regulation SHO list. This is something AMC has not yet done before. Back in 2021, 2022, and so far in 2023, the maximum amount of days we spent on the regulation SHO list was 21 days back in March. But now AMC has tied GameStop's regulation SHO stint with 35 days. And now this extract here and this extract on my next tab explains a specific special regulation SHO 35 consecutive day ruling. So it basically says if a participant of a registered clearing agency has a fail to deliver position or FTD position in a threshold security for 13 consecutive settlement days or 35 consecutive days if entitled to rely on paragraph A1, it may not accept a short sale order on that security from another person or affect their own short sale order in that security for its own account. Now, most of us have been focused on this 13 consecutive settlement day ruling, which applies to some market makers. But other market makers with their bona fide market maker exemption qualify for paragraph A1 and get the full 35 consecutive day treatment. Some market makers have to close out after 13 days, but other market makers get their full 35 consecutive settlement days to allow those FTDs. But theoretically, after 35 consecutive days on that regulation SHO list, all FTDs, regardless of which market maker they come from, need to be closed out of. And that's likely why when GameStop reached the end of its 35 consecutive day tether on that regulation SHO list, GameStop experienced a very quick run up because all market makers, regardless if they have the exemption or not, have to close out of those FTDs. On this second screenshot, it says on August 7th, 2007, the Commission also amended Regulation SHO to extend the closeout requirement from 13 to 35 consecutive settlement days. Accordingly, if the FTD position persists for 35 consecutive settlement days, the amendment prohibits a participant of a registered clearing agency and any broker dealer for which it clears transactions, including market makers, from accepting any short sale orders. Unless they can actually borrow or enter into an arrangement to borrow that underlying security, removing it from the threshold list. And they're prohibited from accepting that short sale order until the participant closes out of the entire fail to deliver position. Not just one day's worth of FTDs, but the entire fail to deliver position. But it says they can do that by purchasing or borrowing securities of any like kind and quantity. Now, I have spoken before about how Ape could be used as a like kind and quantity share for AMC, but obviously now the Ape conversion will shortly be happening. So I personally am excited to see what happens this week and over the next week to see if AMC and its FTDs do fall foul of this extended 35 consecutive settlement day ruling. Also, you can currently get a guaranteed free share of Tesla, a $50 cash reward, and up to 15 free shares, which you could always use to buy more shares of AMC, GameStop, or of Ape. All you have to do is sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below and make the required qualifying deposit. Moomoo is free to sign up, it just requires that temporary deposit, and it's a really great way to help support the channel and to help support me as well. And on top of that, Moomoo is very easy to use. They've got tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools and their own options trading platform. 
and somebody else that's excited for this week is Practical Stocks. He said the short thesis is officially dead. AMC is cash positive. It spent 35 days on the regulation SHO threshold securities list. And theoretically, market makers and hedgies that are shorting APE need to cover and close out of their short position pre-conversion. On top of that, we've got a new AMC QSIP change incoming. AMC shares that are shorted are well into the billions. And it won't be long until hedge funds scramble to be the first hedge fund or market maker to close out of their short position. Because obviously we know the first hedge fund or market maker to reach that exit door ends up suffering the least amount of losses. And it's those final hedge funds that reach the exit door or don't even reach the exit door that end up being liquidated. Now, Cat Striker has also calculated the average number of shares that you and I need to hold to hold the entire AMC flow, and then held some votes with very, very interesting results. So after institutional investors and corporate insiders, roughly 338 million shares are publicly held by 3.8 million individual investors. That mean the average ape invested in AMC has a total of just 89.07 shares each. Now, Cat Striker held a vote to see how many people held more than just 89 shares. And out of 5,267 votes, a whopping 96% of people held more than the average requirement. It's not a 50-50 vote or a 55-45 or a 60-40. It was an absolute whitewash of 96% of people holding more than the average requirement. And not only that, but she said that a lot of people have been saying they hold in the XXXX range of AMC shares and above. So she created a new poll on just how many shares people are actually holding of AMC. Now this is where it gets really, really interesting because there's individual apes holding over 30,000 shares per investor. So even if we just look at the absolute minimum number of shares that one could hold from Cat's votes and just looking at the 9,000 individual voters, we can see the numbers are pretty, pretty huge. Not even prorating the voting percentages over the entire 3.8 million shareholders, but just looking at 9,400 individual respondents. Of the 9,404 individual respondents, 611 people hold over 31,000 shares, 583 people hold over 16,000 shares, 4,000 people hold over 2,000 shares, and 3,900 people hold over one share. Again, I'm not using 1,000 shares, I'm just using one share. I'm not using 15,000 shares, I'm just using 2,000 shares. Not using 30,000 shares, just using 16,000. And not using 100,000 shares, just using 31,000 shares. But from those few 9,400 voters, it gives you 18.9 million shares, 9.3 million, 8.2 million, and I guess an extra 4,000 shares, which totals 36 million shares. So just a small number of 9,400 shareholders out of the entire 3.8 million individual shareholders hold one tenth of the entire AMC flow. Obviously, we know after institutions and insiders, there's only 338 million shares available, and over 36 million of those shares are held by less than 10,000 investors. Again, if you were to prorate these percentages upwards over the entire 3.8 million shareholders, you would see the number of AMC shares out there floating around right now is well into the billions. As a prime example, if you took the 3.8 million individual investors, multiplied that by 6% to get the number of investors holding over 31,000 shares, multiplied that by the 31,000 shares, you get over 7.5 billion AMC shares in existence. Again, this is just another reason as to why the AMC float is held multiple times over and how billions of synthetic shares do indeed exist. And again, how that's led to hundreds of millions of AMC FTDs that are being passed around and transferred every single day, which may just about to be coming to an end. Now, finally, Tony Donara has tweeted saying the AMC 8Ks have been filed. The annual meeting will be November the 8th. AMC's 1 for 10 reverse split will be effective on the start of trading on August 24th, so in just two weeks' time. 
April ceased trading at the end of business on August 24th as well and convert overnight. So you've got the conversion and reverse split happening on the same day, which will be August 24th, which is in 10 days time. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.